2020 is the beginning of an entirely new decade, a whole new age of humanity. As a matter of fact, so many things have been estimated to happen in 2020 which will change the entire direction of where we go as a civilization, but today I'm going to unfortunately have to stifle all of that with the actual hard truth and reality. 2020. What will happen in this year? What will make this year the absolute worst year that we've ever experienced? So far, we're off to a rocky start into the beginning of this year. It's only been January and then a couple of days into February as of the making of this video, but yet, we have experienced things that we have probably not expected to experience in many, many decades, let alone just one single year. The closest point that we've ever been to an almost complete breakout to nuclear war between different countries, which could have made World War III happen and turn into fruition. The rising tensions because of this also making things more difficult to come into the future as well, regardless of many other things that we're going to be talking about. So you may be thinking to yourself, I think 2020 is going to be the best year ever because so and so said this will happen, or this is going to happen, or this is supposed to happen, or this news source said this is going to happen. But the problem is everything is always directed towards the upside. No one wants anything bad to be circulated and no one wants panic or outrage to happen all throughout society, namely the most prominent place where society likes to propagate and enjoy themselves on, the internet. What you're watching right now, YouTube, one of the biggest websites on this internet. But I can assure you that because of this system of false hope that we've all kind of gotten ourselves into, there's going to be lots of surprises up in store for us. January 2020. World War III almost started as a nuclear airstrike was initiated over the country of Iran. This was the closest point on the nuclear arsenal clock, the doomsday clock, which indicates how close humanity is, relatively speaking, to going completely extinct or experiencing some kind of extinction event, almost 90 seconds before midnight as this happened. This has risen the tension between the world's most powerful super nation known as the United States and the Middle East, higher than that than ever before. The breakout of the 2019 NCOV virus, the coronavirus, which is a strain of the common cold flu virus which has never been seen before. There is absolutely no adaptivity to humans within the immune system that we currently have, and there is absolutely no natural remedies or any kind of treatment that could help cure it. It is 100% immune to every single kind of thing we throw at it. Numbers of this virus has been argued across many countries and across many aspects of the internet, but it is commonly assured that the virus's numbers have been greatly throttled by the actual countries of where it exists in. It is mathematically estimated that despite the relatively low numbers of infected patients of this virus, that there are currently over 4 to 10 million total people in the world that are infected with this. So why is this such a big deal? Well, in case you weren't paying attention in your ninth grade algebra class, there's something called an exponential function, something of which goes up exponentially and which is also known as a straight line in the logarithmic function. This means that more and more people will get infected as the virus gets more and more infectious, which will inevitably make the virus even more prone to getting more people and reaching every single possible corner of the globe that there is to get to. This is measured in the r naught scale, which is something that determines how likely it is for a virus to spread. Currently, the NCOV 2019 virus is at a 4.1 estimated or not level, which basically means that if it continues on its upwards projection, it will estimatedly infect around 2.5 billion people. The estimated death tolls of this are obviously highly arguable, but it is estimated that the actual death rate of this virus could be anywhere in between 2 and upwards of 10%. But it will get even worse if the current scenario keeps playing on, of which I have mapped out for the future of this year. I have no intentions of spreading ill will or negativity across the internet, of course, but I think it's highly important to discuss the more likely scenarios of the deadly future that may lie ahead for us. We know what happens during pandemic pandemics like this, when billions of people are infected without even knowing about it. The sovereign nations and superpowers that have every single ability to try to do anything about it will do everything in their power to cut down on the spread of this virus, leading into the discontinuation of trade and natural economic resources that commonly take place in every single day life. The major areas of production for all of the valuation of the United States' product and commercial economy, mainly being that of China, which is unfortunately coincidentally where this virus is being most prominent, will most likely be cut off, meaning that the United States economy is going to be 
highly likely to produce an extremely high retracement within this year. The S&P 500, the largest economic index of the entire world, encapsulating around $26.5 trillion in valuation, is estimated to go through a 70% or more retracement, more or less being triggered by the actual economic collapse which will be initiated by the NCOV-19 virus. Even if the lack of trade and the economic downfall because of this virus isn't directly responsible for the collapse of the United States economy, the actual statistics themselves definitely will. The valuation of the S&P 500 is highly defined by simply the amount of companies that are within it. The top Fortune 500 companies which harbor the most amount of money out of any other institution in the entire world. Tens of trillions of dollars are valued within these top companies which also are responsible for the top trading of products around the entire world itself. This is one of the most important things for the ecosystem of the world considering 99% of all relationships between countries rely on their trading factors. How many products could we get from this country to send to us so that we can sell to our people. China being the world headquarters of such. Made in China? Well, maybe not anymore. As the United States stock market goes into a parabolic cycle, it's eventually going to collapse 100% more than what it did last time in 2008. The retracement of that period being more than 50%. But we've never seen any kind of cycle within the United States economy that's been this drastic since 1929, followed by the early 1930s. And I'm pretty sure we all know what happened then. At the current rate, the statistics predict a 100% chance of the next economic fallout being almost as devastating as the Great Depression. Regardless of the fact of whether or not you have any interest in stonks or anything of that nature, this will definitely affect you regardless of your age, where you live, or any kind of other social status. Your parents' money will be highly affected by this. The companies, the money of which produces the valuable materials in your life that you use on a daily basis, the prices of natural necessities and resources that you consume regularly, and the medical associations and the institutions that provide the assistance for people that are suffering from potential potentially deadly illnesses, such as the coronavirus. This kind of an economic collapse or the retracement of 70% of every single thing in the United States economy that we see today could lead to an even more devastating spread of an unstoppable pandemic within this country. Financial crises are definitely not a good combination with any sort of pandemic illness which is threatening tens of millions of people's lives. If in the worst case scenario these two things line up as the coronavirus eventually spreads into the United States affecting the greater population, we could see a mass outbreak of the deadly strains of the virus mutate as less medical assistance will be available due to the financial crisis. This could raise the death toll of the virus to an upwards of 30%. And if the infectivity of the virus stays the same as I mentioned before, this could lead to over 50 to 100 million people dying, which will make this virus even more deadly and devastating than the world's previously most devastating virus, the Spanish flu, all happening within the next 11 months. Furthermore, the more prominent examples of humanity's advancement such as the space industries that are funded by the government such as NASA and privately owned space companies such as SpaceX that are ran by other billionaires that are also relying on the prosperity of the economy will be highly cut off. Due to this kind of a financial fallout, it's very likely that things such as all of the advancement that we have planned for this year in space such as Mars missions will have to be delayed or cancelled in total. Along with the loss of all the funding of the companies and organizations that are attempting to mediate the drastic change of climate, the more likely thing to occur will be the exact opposite of what we would want to happen. As the prosperity of the US economy dwindled, all the rest of the world's economies would probably follow along suit. We would rely less on the more natural forms of energy such as wind energy, solar energy, due to the fact of how much less efficient and profitable it would be compared to just simply going back to plain industrialization. As a matter of fact, this next stock market correction could literally send us back to the Stone Age in terms of our industrial advancement, leading to an onslaught of even more pollution, that of what we've never even seen before. And whether you feel like you have any personal connection with any of these issues or not, they are all encompassing factors which control the entire livelihood of everyone on this planet, including you watching this one video on YouTube.com, a conglomerate that's owned by one of the largest companies on Earth known as Alphabet. Yes, that's right, Alphabet, not Google, but Alphabet, the second most valuable company aside from Apple itself. 
Websites and major corporations that control lots of fun and interesting entertainment platforms such as YouTube will become scarce and endangered as this whole situation unfolds. In the most drastic of circumstances and the worst case scenarios, lots of these platforms will unfortunately have to go out of business and in bankruptcy as 2020 unfolds. And lots of these fun companies that offered you these awesome products that you thought would never have any chance of losing money or losing the ability to stay around will actually go extinct before your very eyes. Starting with the smallest of companies which can barely even afford the payments to sustain their actual rent, all the way up to the biggest companies that produce billions of dollars per year such as that of YouTube. YouTube itself, despite it having the most profitable year in history in 2019, has generated Alphabet a negative decline within its stock price due to the controversy that the website's been in in recent years. So YouTube is actually causing Google and its parent company, Alphabet, to lose money. Which means that along with everything that's going to happen in this year on top of everything else, YouTube will either have to do one of two things. Completely shut down or redefine and reestablish their entire way of business. Because otherwise, there's no possible way that it could stay profitable and therefore keep on existing. On the topic of the internet and everyone who uses it, we have other all-encompassing issues such as the passing of Article 13, also known as Article 17 as it was renamed to that later on, and the abolishment of net neutrality which are all supposed to take place within 2020. Article 13, which was renamed to Article 17, passed official legislation in 2019 and will take approximately 18 months in total to be fully integrated within the internet, creating impossible for anyone to make any content on the internet without having the overlooming threat of being copyright striked or infringed by other companies since no actual piece of content on the internet is unique. Which means 99% of everyone who produces the content, whether it be from one individual person making a commentary channel, producing a gameplay footage of a game which doesn't actually belong to the person making the video itself all the way to the biggest companies that run the most popular websites that host a piece of content that wasn't produced by them. Everything is endangered because of this one article which is estimated to be fully passed and in full function by the end of 2020 which means the internet as you know it will no longer be what it is. Net neutrality being a prerequisite of Article 13 itself, basically allowing any ISP, also known as the providers of the internet, to control it in any way that they please, charging people for full amount of service for access to different websites, and being able to charge any website that runs on the internet as much money as they want in order to keep running. This will also cause many businesses and websites to go out of business, and once again, no, not just some random hole-in-the-wall website that's viewed by 3,000 people a month, we're talking about websites that could be viewed by tens of millions, possibly even billions of people per month that simply cannot survive under these new rules along with the economic conditions that are going to be soon to follow this year. The internet was and is one of humanity's biggest advancements in terms of communication and it is slowly being disassembled before our eyes unless we are able to do something about it soon because this year is not that much time. 365 days, but actually around 334 days as of the recording of this video itself, meaning that we have even less than when we started. Don't worry, before you panic, I want to make it clear that this is not going to be the end of the world, and I'm not casting some Mayan calendar 2012 Michael Bay movie plot on you, by any means. This year definitely will be one of the most eventful years of all of human history, but maybe not for the best of reasons, as we can clearly tell after watching this video. The Doomsday Clock clicks ever more towards midnight, which will be the time of where humanity ceases to exist. Right now, as of January 31st, 2020, it is only 100 seconds away, and is estimated to reach only one minute away by the end of this year, making it the closest it's ever been to midnight since its inception. And that even goes as far back as the brink of World War II and the Cold War. So are we as a civilization going to be making good progress this year? Well, it depends on the way you look at it, but I'm just trying to prepare you and let you know about the things that will happen, whether you think they're good or not. We are in store for a lot of issues, but we're also in store for a lot of good things as well, so don't think it's all just bad. By the end of the day, 2020 will be a long ride, and we're just getting started, so buckle up your seatbelts, because it's happening whether you like it or not. If you enjoyed this video, then I would highly appreciate it if you would go and subscribe to this YouTube channel and leave a like, because of course that's kind of common sense, 
but I'm not trying to spread any kind of like, you know, force negative information in this video by any means, of course. I'm just trying to let you guys know of the things that are going to happen this year. The things that no one is really talking about, whether it be news sources or, or any other, you know, popular individuals that are talking about these things. Every single thing that I mentioned has a likelihood of anywhere in between 60 to 100% chance of taking place. So I just want to make you guys prepared. This year is definitely going to be a rocky road, but hey, at the end of the day, maybe that's a good thing because we can't have it all good all the time because if it was all good all the time, we would never know what was good. With all that being said, I'll see you guys later in the next one. Goodbye.